guys, I'm pretty excited about this. So I've taught a lot about how that the judgment seat of Christ, as it is popularly taught, that a Christian will suffer loss of rewards if they haven't done good enough uh, when they arrive in heaven. Um, I've said that that's a false doctrine, and um, I've talked about it a lot. I haven't really made a lot of good studies on it yet, but I want to start that now. Kind of This has to deal with that, but also something else that someone else recently showed to me or brought to my attention, and that is blood on your hands. Like Some say that if you, did, if you didn't witness to somebody, then when you get to heaven, you have blood on your hands. Okay, Does the Bible actually teach that? No, it doesn't. Okay, It's just like the loss of rewards thing. It's saying that there will be regret or suffering um, for Christians who are saved in heaven, which is absolutely false. But this is going to be a little bit of a lengthy thing I'm going to read here, and I think it's very well done. And like I said, there will be a lot more on this. I know I need to cover a lot of verses concerning rewards and stuff that people get confused about. Um, but let's start, okay? Today, multitudes of pastors um, or teachers who claim to have the only truth in America go about the highways and hedges putting unsuspecting Christians back into bondage, the bondage of fear and guilt. This ought not be. Sermons have been preached and some have said we should be scared of the coming judgment seat of Christ. How much damage has been done to individual hearts that have been persecuted by a steady diet of this false teaching? If this teaching be true, then 1 John chapter 4, verses 15 through 19 is a lie. If it is not a lie, and it is not, then the teaching that is a lie should be stopped. Okay. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. There, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. 1 John chapter 4, verse 15 through 19. Does this scripture not say that our love is made perfect in God? Because of this, we may have boldness, not fear, in the day of judgment. And does it not say that there is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear? Christians are going to be perfect in every aspect when they appear at the judgment seat of Christ. The proof of this statement will follow, but what is necessary to demonstrate now is that those who preach blood on your hands, fear, and tears have been robbed and in turn are robbing others of knowledge that all Christians can have absolute freedom of fear. 1 John chapter 4 verse 18 states, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. Scripture does not teach that Christians should fear the coming judgment. It is preachers, seminary, and Bible school professors, and other people that are in bondage of fear that are not made perfect in love. What should be changed? Should the scripture be changed? Or should the teachers of blood on your hands go to the scriptures to be changed themselves? The Christian will stand before Jesus perfect, without sin, guilt, or shame. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Jude 24. Jude 24 informs the Christian of several things. First, Jesus is the one that keeps the Christian from losing his salvation. Secondly, Jesus will present the Christian faultless before the presence of his glory. It is impossible to be faultless and still have blood on your hands, fear in your heart, guilt on your soul, and sins recalled. Absolutely impossible. In fact, if the Christian stood with those things on his hands, heart, and soul, he positively could not stand before the presence of Jesus' glory with exceeding joy. Actually, he would not have any joy at all, but what saith the scripture? And to present you faultless 
before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. The question is asked, where did the, where did the false teachings of blood on your hands and tears in your eyes come from? Simply stated from scriptures taken out of context. However, the false teaching is perpetuated by those who unwittingly are trapped by tradition in that they hold to the false teaching with nothing any stronger in their defense than to say, I have always heard it in that way. Ezekiel chapter 3 verses 15 through 21 seems to be a real favorite for those who teach blood on your hands at the judgment seat of Christ. In reading and studying the verses, you see no mention made concerning the judgment. Ezekiel 3 primarily teaches us that Old Testament prophets, like Christians today, had a God-given responsibility to warn the people of the wrath of God. And if Ezekiel failed to do it, God would hold him responsible. If Ezekiel, like Christians today, did not exercise his responsibility as given by God, God would chasten Ezekiel in his earthly life, just as God will chasten Christians today in this life. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 10 says that God chastens us for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. Because Christians living today have the two natures, we are constantly having to be chastened by our Heavenly Father. However, there will be no chastening in heaven at the judgment seat of Christ. The Christian will stand before him in his perfect, glorified body. Many teach that you will have the blood of these souls you failed to witness to on your hands at the judgment seat of Christ and at the great white throne judgment. Such teaching is not scriptural. To believe that is to deny the promise of God as given to Christians in 1 John 1, 9, which says if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. There is no truth in the false teaching that the Christian will have to account to Jesus for unconfessed sins. It simply is not true. All sins were paid for on the cross of Calvary, and all sins are under the blood of Christ. 1 John 1, 9 is dealing with restoring the fellowship with God while here on this earth. If we are reminded or accused of our sins and failing to witness is a sin of omission at the judgment seat of Christ, then there is error in the Bible, and God's word is not true. What does the Bible say about our sins? For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. In Psalm 103, verses 11 and 12. God says, he has removed our sins from us. There are those that teach that God will recall them when the Christian appears at the judgment seat of Christ. Such teaching is without scriptural foundation. In fact, scripture states that God not only forgives the Christian of his sins, but promises to remember them no more. This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds will I write them. And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 16 and 17. The last false teaching so common among Christians is tears in heaven, or at the judgment seat of Christ, or at the great white throne judgment. Three times the word tears appear in the scripture pertaining to Christians in heaven. They are Isaiah chapter 25, verse 8, Revelation chapter 7, verse 17, and chapter 21, verse 4. He will swallow up death and victory, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from off all faces, and the rebuke of his people shall he take away from off all the earth, for the Lord hath spoken it. Isaiah chapter 25, verse 8. This particular verse does not state what the wiping away of tears is, unless it is simply that death is swallowed up in victory. In other words, the absence of death, that which causes tears, is no more. Therefore, the wiping away of tears is essentially the absence of that which causes tears, death. It is for sure that the scripture is not in context with the judgment seat of Christ or the great white throne judgment. The next place in scripture where tears are mentioned as being wiped away in heaven is Revelation chapter 7 verse 17. And one of the elders answered saying unto me, What are these things which are arrayed 
and white robes, and whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore are they before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in his temple. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them nor any heat, for the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them, and shall lead them unto living foundation of waters, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. It is absolutely evident that the above account of wiping away tears is not at the judgment seat of Christ. The account clearly deals with those that have come out of great tribulation. Hunger, thirst, bright, hot sun, light can cause tears. Therefore, the context of Scripture, the wiping away of tears, is nothing more than the absence of those things which cause tears. We find the same reasoning in regards to wiping away tears in Revelation chapter 21, verse 4. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. The last phrase of Revelation 21.4 says, For the former things are passed away. Note, all the former things cause tears, death, sorrow, crying, and pain. Again, in context with the scripture, the wiping away of tears is nothing more than the absence of those things which cause tears. The false teaching that the great white throne judgment, at the great white throne judgment, a Christian may have blood on his hands and feel guilty for not having witnessed when he should have is purely supposition based without scriptural foundation. There is no scripture that teaches such a doctrine. In fact, the scripture clearly states that the only blame for a lost person that the only blame for a lost person going to hell rests solely upon the condemned individual himself. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and right unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and, fool, and their foolish hearts were darkened. And their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, into birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Romans chapter 1, verses 18 through 23. The scripture leaves no doubt as to the condition of the con condemned man at the great white throne judgment. He will not point an accusing finger at any of the saints and say, Why didn't you tell me? Because the scripture clearly states they are without excuse. Therefore, any teaching that says that some of the lost may point a finger at a saint and blame the saint for not telling him is contrary to scripture. However, many sermons contain threats proclaiming that someday at the great white throne judgment, those whom you had a chance to witness to but did not will point an accusing finger and say, why didn't you tell me? Then, supposedly, according to their false teaching, you will cry bitter tears of remorse for having allowed that lost soul to enter into eternity of damnation without Christ. Nothing further could be from the truth. Next time you hear such a proclamation made, ask the one proclaiming that teaching for biblical reference, chapter and verse, along with content, in which the verse rests which is being used for the authority. According to Romans 3, all men are sinners. The only difference between the sinner, which is going to spend eternity in hell, and the saint, which is going to spend an eternity with the Lord Jesus Christ, is one rejects the free gift of having his sins paid for by Jesus on the cross of Calvary, and the other repents and calls out in believing faith to Jesus to save him. The Bible plainly states in Romans chapter 10, verse 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whereas the sinner who rejects the gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ, the Lord, shall stand silent and guilty before God at the great white throne judgment, fulfilling Romans 3.19, which states, Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith unto them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before God. 
Some would argue that the above verse, that this verse pertains only to today. However, it pertains both to today and also the great white throne judgment. Today, in regards to those who come to Jesus because they see themselves helplessly lost in their sins and in dire need of the Savior's tender, loving grace, mercy, and forgiveness, they have come to realize that they are under the law and have failed to keep it miserably and stand condemned before the God of heaven, their creator. They have nothing to say to defend or justify themselves, thus their mouth is stopped. Instead, with a broken heart, they fall in humble faith before their God and Creator, Jesus Christ, and call upon His name. Thus the Creator becomes their Heavenly Father, Lord, and Savior. Instantly they become a child of God, completely cleansed of their sins. In regards to those who reject the salvation of their soul, which can only be secured by placing faith in Jesus in Christ Jesus, Today their mouths are not stopped. They curse at God and call him a liar by rejecting God's only provision for their salvation. All are guilty of this sin who have not come to a place of saving faith in Jesus. Some even verbalize their damnable venom by vocalizing their disdainful attitude, allowing others to hear and witness their foolishness. But... And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face, face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. Revelation chapter 20, verse 11 and 12. The dead spoken of here are those that have rejected Jesus Christ and because of their unbelief are condemned to an eternity without God. There are no saved among these dead, for the saved have been gloriously resurrected with their glorified body. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and the de and death and hell were delivered up, delivered of the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their work. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Revelation chapter 20, verses 13 through 15. The book of life is the same book which Jesus referred to when he spoke to his disciples in Luke, 12, Luke 10, 20, saying, Notwithstanding in this rejoice, not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Is your name written in the Lamb's book of life? Ah. Uh, Okay. Now, let's see here. Some pastors and evangelists would defend their erroneous teaching with a poor excuse. I'm just trying to motivate God's people, but to that I reply, keep your attempts to motivate others unless you are being used by the Holy Spirit to proclaim the truth. If the devil is the father of lies, which Jesus said that Satan is, then whose kingdom is being served if we use other than truth for motivation and exhortation? False teachings for the purpose of motivating others can produce works generated for the wrong cause or motive, thus robbing others of blessings by producing wood, hay, stubble. Uh, let's see. So, um, just because Christ has totally set you free from sin and will present you perfect before him, use this liberty that you have in him not to sit around and do nothing, okay? Uh, but serve him fervently in love. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. Galatians chapter 5 verse 13. God's word teaches that God forgives the Christian of all sins and remembers them no more, and that the judgment seat of Christ is to be looked forward to. It is my prayer that other Christians would search these false teachings out, then determine in their hearts and proclaim the truth, eliminating the blood of your hands doctrine and free the freed. The Christian is free in Jesus, and we, as called men of God, should encourage those that are in Christ. However, I am afraid too many of God's men are guilty of discouraging and placing others into the bondage of fear and guilt. The following are additional scriptures to describe our standing before the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall also confirm you unto the end that you may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 8. Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, 
who both will bring th to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts, and then shall every man have praise of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 5. Compare with these, at that, that thine alms may be in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. Matthew chapter 6, verse 4. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4. That he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 27. If just one Christian among the vast multitude has any spot or wrinkle, then the church would not be without spot or wrinkle. Therefore, what does that say about the individual Christian? That he too is without spot or wrinkle. To the end, he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God, even our Father, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 13. In the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. Colossians chapter 1, verse 22. As for me, I will behold thy face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I awake with thy likeness. Psalm chapter 17, verse 15. This speaks of David's appearance before God in his glorified body. If David, an adulterer and murderer, will be satisfied, surely New Testament saints will be too. And he answered and spake unto those that stood before him, saying, Take away the, the filthy garments from him. And unto him he said, Behold, I have caused thine iniquity to pass from thee, and I will clothe thee with change of raiment. Zechariah chapter 3, verse 4. The Lord removed the filthy garments from Zechariah, which represented sin, and clothed him with the change of raiment, righteousness. This was done without any shame or chastisement to Zechariah. It is my prayer that this will help free the freed. Thank you. God bless. Except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. AcceptYouBeConverted.com is an anti-church system, Trinitarian, free will, eternal security, King James only, Christian Zionist, Young Earth Creation, Lordship Salvation Ministry, where you can learn sound doctrine, apologetics, hermeneutics, and more. AcceptYouBeConverted.com is mobile friendly and secure from hackers and malware with SiteLock. Are you looking for fellowship? AcceptYouBeConverted.com is a virtual community with daily visits from men and women around the globe. Each page includes a comment section. There is a live chat feature that is available in the desktop and mobile version where you can chat with anyone on the site at any time. Join the fun on the message board, which you can access by clicking on the link on the footer or by going to acceptyoubeconverted.proboards.com. AcceptYouBeConverted.com offers MP3 Bible teaching through Sermon Audio, which you can access through the website or through SermonAudio.com or the Sermon Audio app. Just search for It Is Written AJB. If you would like to send me your prayer requests, questions, or comments, there is a contact form on the website, also my Facebook and Twitter. Feel free to contact me anytime. I would love to hear from you. Please visit today. Support the ministry. Share with your friends and family. Share on gospel tracks. Pray for the ministry. Become a partner and help spread the truth of God's Word far and wide. Introducing new video series for YouTube channel It Is Written KJB 1611. Bible Hermeneutics. Learn how to correctly interpret the Bible. Defending the Faith. Master apologetics and be prepared to answer any objections. KJV Bible Q&A, answering various questions with the Bible. Doctrines of Devils Refuted, refuting many false doctrines with Scripture. False Church System Exposed, exposing the many problems within the modern church system. Go Preach, all about spreading the Gospel. False Teachers Exposed, Bible teachers held accountable and named by name. 
KJV Defended, exposing corrupt modern Bible versions and teaching all things concerning the King James Bible. And more. Please subscribe and share.